Guns. 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 Lasers. Phasers. Blazers. Razors. Guns that shoot everything. Anything. All the time. Every day. Guns. I love them. Coolest sci-fi movie guns. Deep fat fried. Deep fat fried. I like shooting people with guns. 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 I just want to say this is the most American episode we ever done. I love guns. Because there's one thing we love here in the United States of America is a gun. It's a gun, boy. And if you ain't got a gun, you ain't no fun. Now, look, you watch, you know, you can talk about some movie guns. And this is all just fiction here, Paul. But look, would these people have been able to defeat the forces of evil if they didn't have a gun? Not yep. in these movies, Scotty. Not in any of these films that we will cover tonight and take a look at a, at least a movie gun or two from. Um, up on the screen now, do you guys recognize this one without looking at the document? It's a uh, man, I could, I've already been looking at the document. Yeah, yeah so... But, yeah, this is the, this is the Sonic this Shotgun from, the from Minority Report. Yeah, yeah. obviously yep. the uh, Sonic Shotgun. Obviously, Sonic Shotgun Jesus. Minority Report. <laughs> no, I don't Who know. could forget the Sonic Shotgun from Minority Report? Uh, I pictures. actually think, uh, and maybe you guys don't feel the same way, but I actually think this movie doesn't get its doing proper. Like, I don't think it's talked about enough in terms of like really cool blends of practical and digital effects. And uh, being a really cool vision of the sci-fi kind of dystopia. Um, oh, yeah. I with remember a, a lot of, of little uh, cool gadgets and stuff in it. You know what I mean? And this was one of them. This is probably my favorite one. It doesn't really show off super well here in this uh, GIF that I found. GIF, yeah. But I also didn't want to risk showing it, you know, in a video. I might actually have pulled a little video of it that's like slowed down, but uh, we'll we'll take a look at that later. Yeah, For we those got of you that. that haven't minute. seen this movie, just real quick, uh, Minority Report takes place in 2054, Washington D.C. Uh, it's like this, um, you know, kind of surveillance state dystopia that's gone the extra mile. So not only are there like retina scanners everywhere that like keep track of where you're going, but they actually have this unit of psychics that work together to create this new thing called pre-crime. These people are called pre-cogs, the psychics, and they can like, uh, you know, sense when a murder is going to happen in the city and, uh, you know, whatever they can, you know, come and get you before you commit a murder that you hadn't committed yet. It's you know, yeah, they basically like arrest you for a murder that you're like going to commit. Yes. Like you would have commit, you would have killed her. So they have a whole, they have a jail. whole like, army of the bureaucracy or arm of the bureaucracy called pre-crime and right. uh tom and you would Cruise, figure that like uh, the society might like take the people who they think are going to commit murder and be like we're going to give you counseling or something no they just treat it like you did commit the murder you're going to prison yeah you're basically like, just confined you know? in like a hollow kind of like you're basically like put into like a, like a you will be punished the for the crime that we feel like you were going to commit yeah, the, and so if you remember, you're put into stasis where your body, uh, you know, requires minimum effort to maintain and your mind is filled uh, with visions of the crime that you committed over and over and over again. Mm. So it's like not only confinement, but torture. Um, you know, Tom Cruise plays uh, a detective in this. There's also these weird little spider things that infiltrate your house and stuff and i just saw a, a clip of elon musk saying something that was pretty like alarming because it's true he's like you know like this type of shit from minority report it, it you could do it now if you wanted to have like a, a a swarm of assassin drones you get a tiny little compact explosive charge you take today's uh retinas scanning and facial recognition technology you send a swarm of these things into an apartment building and have them go room to room scanning until they find the person and then they just run into that person and blow up and kill them it's like that would require literally no new technology you could just do that now yeah so it's like you know this movie kind uh, of presaged that being from the early 2000s 
I'll tell you what, in this scene before, when he gets his uh, eyes done, which he'll say, that's a great scene in the movie. So I agree with you, Paul. It's definitely underrated for some reason, which I don't know why. Probably because it's just like a Spielberg feel like, you know, so it's like, oh, he doesn't he doesn't make good movies. I mean, yeah. a lot of people just they just have that because I mean, and in fairness, I mean, he's made a lot of shit. It is true. But this one's definitely a, a pretty good uh, movie from him. Yeah, I like this. Um, so. Not every weapon has to directly produce deadly force to be effective. And Minority Report pre-crime offers the uh, standard issue sonic shotgun as their standard kind of weapon instead of a deadly weapon. So that's kind of non-dystopian. The cops carry a number of ways to disable a target, and this is one of them. I figure we'll probably get away with showing uh, some of this. There's um, like a, isn't there like a puke one or a puke gun in that movie too? Yeah, uh, called a First six stick. Gun. You yeah. can see they kind of slowed it down here to show the action of the gun. This gun is somehow charged up, I guess, by the function of spinning it around like that. So you can get off another shot and it allows you to do some really cool one-handed reloads where you just kind of spin it around a couple of times and boom, ba boom. Um, if you kind of skip towards the end, uh, I think once Tom Cruise gets his hands on it, he starts doing some pretty cool shit with it. Yeah, you see him flip it around there and recharge another shot, and he's able to... So that's pretty cool. <laughs> this person who edited this is, like, very hyped. Dude, It's how, that's how you get that uh, PG-13 rating. Yeah. The sonic shotgun. I mean, this is pretty cool, though, dude. If I had one it of is. these, it'd be pretty Billy Badass to have, you know. And you could know that, like, you could definitely kill somebody with one of these. You blow them off a roof or into traffic or some shit, or they hit the wall the wrong way. But it's not an instantly lethal weapon. It looks like it's pretty effective from a different, uh, effective from a decent range. So if he was shooting this from farther away, it would probably drop somebody to their knees or just knock somebody over. Um they also have this six stick thing. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Which that's a few things that was all right. Yeah, they it looks like just like a normal baton, but really what they do is they just poke you with it, and it's got some kind of electrical pulse that's tuned just to the right frequency that it makes you vomit up whatever's in your stomach. So I think the the next picture is of that as well. Gross. Yeah. Ugh. So there's a couple of scenes in the movie. This yeah. one's the most memorable. <laughs> They fucking touch you with a stick and you puke your guts out. But think That's about horrible. it, like it 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 like it makes you helpless. You know what I mean? It it like diffuses a lot of people to. Have... Uh, yeah. Oh fuck yeah! Puking your guts out will take the fight out of you a lot of times. Um. So yeah, this is probably the best scene in the movie with one of them. But there's a couple of them. Um. But I don't know. I just appreciated this movie for having weapons that weren't necessarily designed to blow somebody's face or head off. But um you know, being cool anyway. And they, it does have yeah. some weapons in it, obviously oh, God, yeah. normal guns and people's heads do get blown off too. So, uh, well, yeah. I guess their heads don't because it's a PG 13 movie dag nabbit. Uh, but of course let's talk about a weapon that is definitely designed to blow people's heads off. Oh, uh, yeah. The lawgiver from I'm now I'm specifically kind of covering the lawgiver from dread which yeah. is the 2014 remake. Which, by the way, you, talk, you want to talk about a movie that's like an also severely, severely underrated. Criminally underrated, dude. You know? Oh, yeah. Uh, Box great. office flop, despite being like probably one of the best fucking I am movies the released law. that year. What about what about the Stallone one? The Law! No. I mean, that one is pretty <laughs> <annoying>. <laughs> It's terrible. The Stallone yeah, one pretty much sucks. I, I, I probably watch it every couple of years. And Why? actually... Just because it's it's one of those movies I just remember growing up watching. Yeah, and it's, it's so bad, dude. It's not. I, I remember so watching it as a kid I have too. No but nostalgia for that shit. I'll, I'll be love honest with you, like, one. I'll be honest with you, like, since fucking this remake that we're talking about came out, I haven't really wanted to watch the old one. I just watched the remake because it's like, oh, but yeah, better. but dread. Dread is just awesome. I, I've probably seen that movie like 20 times. I wouldn't even call it a remake. I just call it like a different adaptation of the same source material that is just way better at doing yeah, way, it. Way true to the source material, too. Because, I mean, like, I'll tell you what, a big thing that sucks with that is like a slogan, obviously, is so egotistical. It's like, I'm going to take my helmet off. It's like, no, it's not even the character. Like, yeah, you fundamentally yeah. misunderstand. You're never supposed to see Dread's fucking face. Yeah. Man. You're a piece of shit. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Stuff. But, yeah. yeah, the gun in this movie is amazing. Carl Urban's great in this movie, and this gun is cool. The fucking drug they use to slow time down is cool. Slow-mo. 
Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so this is the lawgiver, and this actually goes back to the comic book in Judge Dredd. I think the next picture we have is of that, if I'm not let me see. Mistaken? Yeah. Yep. So this is a picture of like what the lawgiver looked like in the Judge Dredd comics, and it's very much more like Buck Rogers space lasery. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, it's definitely um, got that like fucking classic sci-fi aesthetic going. Yeah, and there are actually a number of these kind of in the comics that actually went through a Mark One. This is the Mark One. Then it went through Mark II, which is way more like the one that we're talking about now, when it became a uh, like a more modern, compact-looking, normal gun with that it kind of retained and added to a lot of the features of the original gun. Um, so the Lawgiver comes with a number of features that are pr- make it a pretty cool gun, and no matter how it looks. Um, so each one of them has a sensor that recognizes the palm print and the DNA of only one judge. And if anybody else tries to pick this thing up and pull the trigger of it, it blows up in their hand and takes their hand and forearm off. So uh, the judge, by the way, can disable that with a command, but only the judge that it's coded to can give that command. So if he wants to give his lawgiver to somebody because he's wounded or whatever to have them keep fighting, he can do that. There's a command for it, but other which is really you, smart. When right. you think about it too, because like if some, I mean, if, you know, if you get disabled, somebody just pick up your gun. But like in this universe, like fuck no, and especially the mega cities that they live in, the shit they face, like yeah, you can't be having given your enemy any extra weapons. Uh, the lawgiver in the 2012 film Dread, sorry, it was 2012, not 2014, uh, resembles, oh. like I said, the Mark II model. Yeah, in dude, the that's comics. been nine years. That's crazy. Or actually 10 years. It's been 10 years. Dude. Yeah, oh, it's, it's nuts how fast time is feels, blown by. It feels like it, was, there was a strong, like it wasn't that long ago. There was a strong push to get a, a sequel to that movie, but it just never it just, happened. Yeah. It, was, it just didn't really make really sad. Yep. It is. Because uh, it, it was a great movie. Um, was terrible, terrible. So it has three fire modes in the movie, uh, semi, which is semi-auto, rapid fire, which is full auto, uh, and silenced. So for those of you that aren't gun people, semi-auto means it'll fire as fast as you can pull the trigger with your finger. So bang, 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 bang. Full auto means you can pull the trigger and hold it down, and it will continue to rapid fire bullets until it's empty. Uh, and then uh, that that last one... Um, silenced obviously is it has a little silencer that comes out over the barrel which is really neat and uh, another thing that i learned when i was looking this up is when it's in quiet mode it disables its vocal responses so when he says you know silent he says stealth mode i think and it re- start it, it reacts to his whispers and it stops responding to him with the you know high x so it's kind of a neat little thing too. So he's able to go stealth mode, extend it, make it a silent weapon if he's taking out, you know, he wants to go stealthy. That's super cool. I mean, it's like the ultimate fucking gun. If we're just being honest here, it's like, okay, I want to do this now. I mean, I mean this is probably realistically the kind of like smart gun that gun nuts would legitimately go fucking bat shit for. Uh, like, yes. I mean, you know, who wouldn't want this fucking thing, right? Uh, the screen readout shows that a full magazine carries about 50 full metal jacketed uh, 25 AP and 25 incendiary, uh, incendiary ammo, so AP armor piercing, and 25 high explosive rounds. So this gun yeah, carries an absurd amount of ammo just in its normal clips and different ammos that you can switch to with a vocal command. So, and a lot of them are very much, uh, you know, self-explanatory. So you've got standard full metal jacket, nine millimeter ammo. Uh, you've got 25 armor piercing bullets. So if you're going shooting into a, a, a vehicle or an engine block or something, these are going to stop a car or go in the side of a tank. Uh, you have 25 incendiary rounds, which, you know, or start fires. And uh, you've got 25 high explosive rounds, oh, yeah, dude. which, ex- you know, pierce and explode. <laughs> One of the few uh, actual uh, crossovers uh, or actual common things they kept with both of the Judge Dredd movies, honestly. Yeah. Um, the, it's, it's, it's this good this idea. one added the hot shot. The incendiary round was replaced with hot shot, which is actually a different round from the Mark One Dread gun for the nerds out there. 
But uh, hot shot in this one is more of like a piercing round that then burns something from within. And we see him use it. I think the next picture is him using that particular round on a dude. So it just pops into his mouth and just burns his skull yeah. from the inside out. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, fuck, dude. Um, oh, so, yeah, it's used in the stand, standoff screen. Uh, standoff <laughs> scene, anyway. Yeah. Uh, but in uh, in the original gun, the hot shot was a heat seeker round, which might even be even cooler. It locks on to the body heat of a somebody and goes around corners and shit. Oh, so I, mean, awesome. I think I'd I think I'd give up that for this, but this was still pretty cool. Oh yeah, this is dope. Yeah, I want the homing missile gun, dude. Fuck yeah, I love it. Um, oh so yeah. Moving on dude. to our next one, and you know, I do think this thing is pretty fucking cool. Dude, this thing is fucking dope. This is the noisy cricket, right? The this, noisy so, cricket, yes. I remember um in the I mean, like, I feel like the Men in Black movies, because there were so many bad sequels and shit that were like so uninspired and lame that like the this move the original <coughs> people forget how like good the original was, especially for the time and stuff. And uh I remember fucking seeing this movie in theaters. This motherfucking gun right here when he actually uses this thing was like one of the biggest crowd pops I've ever seen in a fucking movie. Yeah. It's like a lot people, of fun. Um, people love like when he actually uses this fucking, oh, uh, even gun, when he you know? gets it too, he's seen all these cool weapons. Like, yeah, he's going to get this big ass gun. It's like, here you go. That's what I'm talking <coughs> about. You know, he's doing the whole like Will Smith, like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And then he gets the fucking, he's like, what the fuck is this little piece of shit? Yeah. Dude? It's like a little noise. Oh, well, it's actually pretty funny uh, when I kind of looked into this. Is there's a reason I included it because you know, uh, look, it looks wise. It's probably the least cool weapon, but that's kind of what makes it cool. It right. looks like a dinky piece of shit, but you can blow a hole in the side of a tank with it. Right. Um, so, uh, it, tiny pocket sized alien cannon that produces so much recoil it could tear the arms off a concrete gorilla. One of these <laughs> sites had to say that's pretty funny. Um, so, yeah, there's a good chance that you end up killing the dude using it, I guess, <laughs> rather than the intended dude, and I target. Love there's, like, zero... He gives him zero fucking warning about, like, the power of the gun or anything. He just sends him out there into the field with it, like, here you go. Like, it'll, it'll be funny. We'll, well see what he does. You know? As I looked into it, this is apparently a routine hazing uh, thing that the senior agents in Men in Black do, and they actually all take bets on how far the rookie agent will be blown back the first time they whip this thing out and fire it. And whoever gets closest wins the big pot of money. And so this is an ongoing thing. It's given to rookie agents. Now, another little fact that I figured out is that's kind of cool. In the com I guess there's comics, men in black comics. Yeah, it was based uh, on a comic. Uh, will Smith's character modifies this so that it has less recoil, but still packs the same punch and packs it as his main piece now, which Dope. is kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, yeah <laughs> you, you, it's hard to pull Damn. scenes from these yeah. movies, but here you can see him blowing the ass out of a truck, but <laughs> you know, blowing himself 20 <laughs> feet back into the hood of a car. Um, yeah, dude, this was like, like I said, this movie, this moment in the, uh, in the movie theater, I remember people just going fucking, and you have no it. idea what it's going to do. I mean, obviously it became a famous and iconic scene because I mean, of it's almost predictable in retrospect, but like, I don't know. It's I didn't so see it unpredictable coming. that, you know, it's predictable now, but like looking back on it because you see it, you've yeah. seen it so many times. It's so it's super predictable, but I'm telling What's, you the first time I saw this movie in the theaters, it got super pop too. Like everybody well, dude, laughed it's, and it's screamed. Like, man, it's What's the idea in a movie? Uh, and it's, it's some it's like, that's very eighties and nineties. It's like the big ass gun. You're always going to give the hero the big ass gun. Right. And of course and it's they just subverted it's that subverted. expectation. And everybody thought he got some pussy little zapper gun or something. He had to earn his big gun. And it turns out he's got like a fucking missile launcher in his hand. <laughs> yeah, he's good. <laughs> um, I love it. So yeah, that's the that that's actually codified. This was released in conjunction with the movie. It's a little companion book for the first film that's called The Official Agent's Handbook and it's uh, thoroughly described in there uh that this is a total hazing ritual that they just give these no like nobody ever uses the noisy cricket except for rookies. It's given to them as their first pistol. And uh it also says that like it's frowned upon by the higher level agents, but the whole idea is, is that like, it's the higher level agents that are making the bets. 
so, so clearly it's not frowned upon um so yeah um this oh, one is uh i just like this weapon this is a pretty cool <laughs> weapon oh no for sure i mean it's a great joke it's a great gag in the fucking movie and uh you know it, yeah i mean you're right tj it's really like just shows you like the first one they really had lightning in a bottle and then it was just the cash grabs it was just so bad the sequel they just oh, yeah. they just kind of like but, sucked all the fun out of it they forgot what made it fun in the first place and it just got lame and that first movie weird. it just felt like uh everything felt like a little like fun discovery you know everything was like oh they set you up remember, an expectation and then they subvert it in a pleasing way you know you and remember then, when uh when fucking a, a, a tommy lee jones agent or whatever pulls up in that black cadillac and uh you know what uh, will smith is criticizing him for driving such an old car or whatever and then it morphs and turns into this like rocket car and he goes spinning through the tunnel and shit and will smith yeah. is screaming that was a great moment you know what i mean it was just the whole movie was filled with that and once you've done that one time it's hard to do that again you know yeah uh, i mean for sure they had that scene where the you know the, where they introduced the, the little pug alien you know, and they're like, he's standing next to this dude that totally looks like a fucking alien in disguise. And, you yeah. know, Will Smith's character, I think it's K or whatever is like, or J, I can't remember what his name was, but he was just like, you know, oh, that dude's definitely an alien. And then the pug starts talking like, well, you don't like it. You kiss my fuzzy butt or whatever the fuck. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, you know, it's just like so many little moments like that where like you're filled with shit. You're like led, that, you're led in one direction, and then it's like, nope, it's actually. It's just here, a really you know? funny, smart fucking film, especially in a blockbuster movie too. So it's like it's not even just like you know, it's a crowd yeah. pleaser. Uh, just totally. I don't know. Yeah, it was a total crowd pleaser. And then every I fucking, hate to be like a fucking boomer, but it's like they just don't make them. They like don't that. make them like that no more. more. <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, really the cricket don't. is an awesome weapon, and, and I feel like they got progressively worse with each new entry. Oh, the last one they came out with was just completely awful. I'm like Thor in that or something. Yeah, just, just yeah. I feel like, kind of like a reboot. The turd gun. What uh, the fuck? So this I shoot is, you with this giant turd. We go from like giant blockbuster to underappreciated horror sci-fi movie existence mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. Jude Law here. Oh, Jude Law. Uh, this is David Cronenberg's final screenplay that was ever produced by the way so it's a cronenberg film which should explain a little bit about the gun we're talking about here which okay. is it does which, it's called the gristle gun mm -hmm. um so i'll give you the story behind this gristle gun okay so this movie it's kind of hard to explain if you've never seen it but it involves vr it involves a future where VR worlds are the norm, and when the new version comes out, everybody wants it, and there's this one chick that's brilliant at writing it. And she, the new version is called Existence for some reason because it's so real. And mm -hmm. the whole movie, they have to go in and out of the VR world, which is very photorealistic and shit, but you, they have powers within it. It's kind of like a pre-Matrix Matrix, honestly. Um, so anyway... Basically, in the scene that this gun comes out, um, Jude sits down and eats a chicken dinner inside of Existence. And then as he's eating, he realizes that there are some dudes there that mean him harm or that he might be in trouble. And so because he has powers within it, he like starts taking the chicken bones and assembling them into the gristle gun, which... <laughs> okay is made of like the bones from his meal and it fires human teeth Whoa. as bullets. Fuck. Um, and so if you go to some, you can look at, I just pulled a macabre. few pictures of this thing. Dance macabre. Uh, here's a picture of the prop that was used in the movie. Pretty cool. Wow. wow. Um, yeah, dude. Guarantee you've never seen a gun like that. But if that's you, pretty fucking dope, honestly. That's a unique weapon for sure. <laughs> it's a fucking chicken bone gun that fires human teeth. Yeah. Sign me, sign me up. <laughs> and there's a pretty cool scene. Here he is. Here's I had to pull some, you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, Jude. Fire, fire, Jude. Fire. Oh my god, Jude. He can he can oh, fucking, Jude. Dude, he can hit me with his gristle gun any day of the week. Oh it looks, like a, Jude. it looks like a pretty long gristle gun, too, Paul. It does Same. a girthy one. Some other pictures of it. Um, you know, you can just totally tell this is a Cronenberg thing here. Oh, um, God, yeah. And it's actually a pretty cool movie. If you haven't seen it, he didn't direct, but he wrote the screenplay and he was there. You can see Cronenberg here. Um, we're going to want, this is the gris. This is so this is the gristle gun scene. So uh -huh. they have this guy come up 
uh, and he looks like a waiter, but he just goes to attack them. And they couldn't put the explosive squibs on the dude's face, but Cronenberg was insistent that the tooth gun had to fire a tooth like right into this dude's face and like blow his fucking face off. And right. so they built this rig. If you look at it, you can actually tell it's two real arms in there. Yeah. And then they've got a fake head. And you only see the fake head for the explosion of blood, and then it goes back to another dude with this bloody rig, and so it looks really fucking good in the movie, dude. There's just a yeah. still shot, and you can see Cronenberg there over there on the left, kind of directing it. Yeah. Um, but this is just a really this is the only uh, you know memorable shot in this movie that the gristle gun is used. It's not like he whips this thing out and uses it a bunch of times in the movie. It's just useful in this one scene for him to get out of trouble. But. uh you know, it's definitely the weirdest fucking gun that I could think of to put uh, in this yeah. movie or to put in this uh, episode. Uh, yeah, it's one I, I wasn't like, even aware of, to be honest. I'm trying to think. I'm tr I'm literally like racking my brain to try to think. Is like, is there a weirder movie gun that I can even fucking call up a memory of? I don't even know how you could do that. It's yeah, just like, there's some yeah, weird ones and some cool. I mean, we've covered a bunch, but um. Yeah, you this motherfucker is definitely, it takes the weird prize. But I totally do, my Jude Boner aside, I totally do recommend, if you haven't seen this movie, to go see it, uh, pick it up. It's, you know, whatever. It's streaming a bunch of places now because it's an old movie. But it is a David Cronenberg film. It's got a lot of, like, Cronenberg-esque, uh, well, not esque, Cronenberg worked on the uh you know. Cronenberg s yeah he's it's just Cronenberg yeah yeah it's got a bunch of Cronenberg it's shit weird it. and it's a weird pre Matrix VR film where you get a lot of this weird gore and weird shit that happens it's within we, dude it's gonna be a bunch of weird body shit I mean it's it's Cronenberg yeah all right so you recognize this gun this is a pretty cool that gun. gun it's that gun dude oh that gun that, that gun. gun amen yeah that one yep so. This is uh, Deckard's Blaster from Blade Runner, which actually is probably like, in terms of screen time and shit, this gun got the least of all the guns that we're talking about, even the gristle gun. Like, Deckard only whips this thing out, you know, a few times in the movie, and it didn't even have, like, a canon name. So when I call it Deckard's Blaster, that's just me using what people have started to call it, but it didn't even, like, in the script didn't even have a name right so it was just supposed to be a gun and they just had a really talented prop master who was told to make a you know functional looking futuristic -y pistol and he made a really memorable piece of hardware in the that people like still remember to this day it's that it has two triggers there yeah it does uh, that's one of the most memorable things about it and one of the most ingenious things that he did, you know, uh, insinuating that this thing has two different kinds of ammo that you can fire both at once or whatever the fuck. You know, it just you don't really know. Like I said, there's I not also really like the uh, the semi translucent, like amber looking hand. It also just looks like it, it just has like the appearance just by looking at that's it, like a super powerful weapon. Not only right. that, but it looks I mean, for something that's such a far flung sci fi thing, it looks like a real gun. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it doesn't have like a. There's nothing it's like. Some futuristic it doesn't technology look like super doesn't bullshit exist. kind of stuff. It looks like it's a fucking gun. You know what and I mean? And it's literally just a rubber prop. There was never even like a metal prop for this gun made. Wow. Um, this is, a, of course, from Fallout New Vegas. You guys recognized it more as that. This is that gun from Fallout New Vegas. They didn't give it two triggers, though. Why yeah. they didn't give it two triggers, I'm not sure. Uh, they definitely left space for two in that big giant trigger guard. They should have just done it. But yeah, yeah, I yeah. always get this gun. It's maybe it's, maybe it's an okay weapon in the game. The two triggers is really what would have sold it. Is like we're stealing uh, Blade Runner property <laughs> right. or whatever. So yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's agree. clearly meant to be Deckard's gun. Um, yeah. You know, the way it's designed is very similar. Uh, now that lo that looks nice. So that's the actual prop. Um, and it's um, actually just a hodgepodge of real gun parts. So I think that, uh, top gun slide part is part of an Austrian nine millimeter handgun. I can't remember what, what it was. I didn't, it really has down. a look of like, it does have that kind of like, like homemade kind of thing. Like it's like, almost yeah. like, oh yeah, it looks pieced together. 
Yeah, sure. like it looks like it's almost like, yeah, like it's put together. I mean, I guess it was. And, and, oh, yeah, and it was. keep in mind here, you're seeing this prop under the harsh studio lights of them looking at it like an artifact from the movie. In the film, right. you really never get this clear of a look at it. You do get some glimpses of the dug- double trigger. And in that dark, grimy reality, this gun just looks so fucking yeah, cool. Yeah, it's like man. film noir. I mean, sure. like it's, it's, it's like, really dark when you look at it. Yeah, see, like, I yeah, mean, obviously so. the movie's done in black and white, but yeah, that's. I mean, you, you can see, see more uh, I pulled a few pictures of Deckard, uh, you know, whipping it out. <laughs> <laughs> you like to whip it out to that uh, robot chick or whatever. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> whip it out. <laughs> Here he is kind of like, carrying it like a, I don't know, like it's heavy or something. This, this implies that it's got weight if he's like having to heft it over his shoulder. So maybe it's a big old heavy piece of iron. It that's what I always felt heavy. like in the movies, like when he's holding that gun, that it's like, it's just like, it's really heavy and there's a lot of power by because to kill these androids, he needs that stopping power. Like it has right. to go above and beyond just a regular gun. Yeah, I think you are correct. I think I got another picture here. Um, I don't think so. Or do I not? Was that it? Nope. That's it. That's, well, there you go. It that's won't, all, folks. Oh, that's that's perfect it. time. Yeah. Beep, so, beep, 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 beep. That's all, folks. You know, sorry. Some more cool movie guns for you movie fans out there. If you liked it, yeah. let us know and share it. Because the last one I did of these sucked. So <laughs> yeah, last one of these. Out, out, but hey, hopefully, fucking coolest guns too. And hey, go back and watch the original. If you like this one, go back and watch the previous one. Is yeah, this fucking good? Dep- I don't know what the fuck. Why are you guys got to get movie guns? Go I watch that. Yeah, shit. look. I mean, if there's any guns you're gonna like, it's guns like these because they didn't Quit hurt being anybody. a bunch of little punk ass they didn't bitches. Hurt nobody. Go watch. They that just shit. look cool. And watch this, thumb this up, and suck our dicks. Whoa. Thank you. 2022 will be the year that we literally drown you in content. 156 standard 30-minute episodes of Deep Fat Fried. 52 long-form episodes of Deep Fat Fried. 37 episodes of Dank D&D. Live episodes of Onion Nuggets every Wednesday. New Cinema for Cynics reviews. Fighting Boys. Abandon Hope. Hideology. Ask Hollywood Love. And The Grease Trap. And even if you manage to watch it all, we still have a massive back catalog of old content that's going to blow your mind. We have got metric tons of old commentaries, grease traps, mountains of deep fat fried episodes. We've got oceans of flash fries. We've got valleys of abandoned hope and ideology and other miscellaneous content you could watch for weeks, if not months, straight. And with all this content, both new and old, We have realized that it is time to simplify our Patreon. Yes! Right now, our Patreon is split into a $10 tier and a $5 tier. Now, this has long aggrieved us because our philosophy in this company is that simplicity is best. How do we create so much content? We keep it simple. We keep it streamlined. We commit to a process and we constantly fine tune that process. Anything that wastes time, we get rid of. Having two patron tiers is not in line with our philosophy. So we've decided to unify into a single tier at the price point of $7. Join the Pessimist Productions Patreon today because we are looking very forward to entertaining you all in 2022. Deep fat fight.